A Basenet Intermedia Group production. Give you my heart, but the very next day you gave it away. This year, to stop me from tears, I'll give it to someone special. Happy holidays, everyone, and welcome to Basenet's sixth annual holiday special. I'm Gene White. You just watched Holly Hurley and Winter Adams in a Basenet classic clip from 2010. And now, before we begin the festivities from Boston, let's welcome once again Basenet's Senior Vice President, Holly Hurley, with a welcoming message as she has done for every one of our holiday specials. Happy holidays, Holly. Well, happy holidays to you, Jean, and I'm doing something you can only do in Wisconsin, spending my Christmas with actual Santa Claus. It's our sixth official uh, BaseNet holiday special, and uh, I like to celebrate somewhere very cold. We're looking for exciting things to come. Obviously, we've had a great five years, and uh, I'm sure the future will be no different. Uh, and to stick with tradition, we're going to go back to Allison and Herb in the studio. But before we go there, back to Eugene in Los Angeles. Happy holidays, and of course, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, folks. Thanks, Holly. And it was great having you open our special once again. And now, from Boston, Massachusetts, let's welcome for the second year in a row your host, Allison Lee from World Views, and her co host, Herb Fuchs, BaseNet Senior Field Correspondent. Happy holidays, Allison and Herb. Thanks, Gene, and happy holidays to you. Happy holidays, Gene. I'm Allison Lee, the host of World Views. And I'm Herb Fuchs, Senior Field Correspondent with BaseNet. And we're here in Boston Common like last year. This time, though, we're in front of the Frog Pond. We'll have reporting from Julie Marie in L.A., and we'll also have Larry the Lobster and Fred Boas in New York City. But first, we're going to show you some of the sights and sounds around Boston Common tonight. Speaking of Boston Common, you were at the menorah lighting here last year, weren't you, Herb? Yes, I was. So what happened this year? Well, Allison, that's a good question because uh, this year, for the first time since 1888, Hanukkah took place on the same day as Thanksgiving. Hmm. And we even renamed the holiday Thanksgiving mm -hmm. just to uh, commemorate that. And the reason for that, if you remember last year's special, we talked about the fact that the Jewish calendar runs on the lunar cycle rather than the uh, secular cycle mm -hmm. and because of that we lose a couple days every month so every so many years we have to have a leap month that gets things kind of close back together again to to account for that mm -hmm. so um, this was that year and as a result um, we had to be flexible we uh, rather than having mashed potatoes and cranberry sauce at that dinner we substituted potato latkes and cranberry sauce with uh, with that and it worked out quite well um, actually the next time that's going to happen has been calculated I do you have any idea when that might be it's want to long, take a guess it's a long time from now but how long uh, it's the year 79,043 <laughs> okay and that's a really long Larry, time Larry, Larry is uh, has agreed to mark his calendar to be sure that he remembers that uh, that year when it comes up so uh, <laughs> But you know, in reality, uh, having the holiday connected, Hanukkah connected with Thanksgiving actually is more meaningful than having it connected with Christmas mm -hmm. because both events commemorate um, uh, trying to survive affliction. And uh, certainly that's what Hanukkah did and, and, and the pilgrims coming to America were, were close to that. So uh, in any case, we were happy that uh, there was something different this year. And that's the, uh, a long answer to your very short question. Mm -hmm. And on a lighter note, we have Larry the Lobster and Fred Boas in New York City. Where are you guys right now anyways? Well, Fred, here we are in New York City for the third year in a row. Two years ago, 
You dragged me to the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Last year, you dragged me to the Walman rink. Where did you drag me to this year? Well, Larry, if you turn around, you'll see we're back at the Walman skating rink. We're at a different location. We're on the other side of the park where we were last year. And as you can hear in the background, we have a Zamboni running. But anyway, do you remember what we talked about with the uh, park from last year? Basically, the Walman rink was created by a trust fund for roller skating in the summer, ice skating in the winter. It was designed for year-round activity. Right now we have people walking around uh, on the pathways behind us. We have people taking pictures, walking their dogs. The whole area in the winter looks like it's being, uh, being used for activities all day and all night. From here, we're leaving to go into the, uh, back to Rockefeller Center to take a look at the Christmas tree for this year. Maybe we'll find Santa Claus. And now back to Allison and Herb in Boston. Thanks, Larry and Fred. That looked like a lot of fun. I wonder where you guys will end up next year. And we're next going to go to Julie Marie in Los Angeles. But before we do, Julie, I just want you to know that it's in the 50s here in Boston this evening. Uh, I hope it's I hope it's at least that warm out there. Julie? Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. Right down Santa Claus Lane. Thanks, Allison. Thanks, Tim. And happy holidays. I'm Julie Marie, and as you can see behind me, we are starting our holiday celebration at Santa Monica Pier. Runners ready? Runners set? <laughs> Over 5,000 participants ran in the 36th annual Santa Monica Venice Beach Christmas Run. While some ran for the competition, Others took a more leisurely approach to enjoy the beauty of the Pacific Coast. The best part is just seeing everybody dressed up, coming together as a running community and running for fun. I like the energy. It's really good. Everyone's really like, yay! Playing straight for the holidays. Say the energy of other people. Everyone's in the holiday spirit. I've been wearing costumes. You have the Santa Monica Beach behind you. It's crisp, cool, and just fun. Just fun. <laughs> oh, it just gives you the spirit, the spirit of the holiday and the um, camaraderie of all the people being together. Hanging out with each other, <laughs> the best part. And uh, watching it, how much fun everybody has, yes. the costumes they have, I love. And Santa waited to award medals to the top three to cross the finish line of the 10K run. So this is the first time I've actually like won it, so for the females at least, and it's just it's a great feeling in the world. So moving from Santa Monica to Studio City, we are now at the Festival of Giving, where, as you can see behind me, people are already coming out to donate various items, such as food, clothing, and many more, in addition to enjoying real snow here in Southern California. We for all on a Sunday afternoon, North Hollywood families could enjoy a day of fun and games at Beeman Park. Children made snowmen, slid down real snow-covered hills, and had the good old traditional snowball fight. I saw snow once in my life, and this is as, as good as it's going to get for me because I'm not a fan of the cold. Playing in the snow, super fun. A lot. The minions that are running over here right now. <laughs> Hello, hello. They're fun. Well, the I love snow. the snow. Yes, the snow is great. We went sledding down the hill at like 40 miles an hour <laughs> and survived. There were also musical performances by local groups like this one. Thank 
Giving was the main theme at the third annual Window Family Festival, where kids were encouraged to write letters at the Operation Uplift table, and everyone was encouraged to bring a variety of items to donate to local charities. It feels good to help other people that are in need. Uh, we have enough of what we want, so we like to give out to other people. And of course, the big guy himself made a special appearance at the festival by offering free pictures for all. And waiting to get some, a picture with Santa, maybe? Where I'm standing is a historic landmark for California. I'm standing in the Campo de Coanga, where the Mexican-American War officially ended and California finally joined the United States. Right now, there are over 3,000 little bags that will light up as the sun goes down. Bags gave light at the Luminaria Festival as residents enjoyed an evening of big band Christmas music and free cookies with hot chocolate to warm up to. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the one I used to know And on the inside of the Campo de Coanga, a craft table was set up where kids could make their own bags while enjoying a special performance by the Synchronicity Handbell Choir. Happy holidays from sunny California. Now back to you, Allison and Herb, in the studio. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Julie. So last year, we watched the tree lighting here at Boston Common, but we decided to change it up a little this year. So we went to Faneuil Hall to watch Mayor Thomas Menino light the tree there. From best to some shining bright, there's only pleasure to the sun. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, your candles shine so bright. without our beloved mayor, Tom Menino. He's the longest-serving mayor in Boston history. And talk about going out on top. When you leave in January, there are going to be so many people cheering you on and also saying thank you. But we want to talk about what's happening tonight and just how much this holiday season has changed and that the look of Boston has changed in the past 20 years. Well, the city of Boston over the last 20 years has changed immensely. A larger population, more diverse, 
youngest city in America right here in Boston, Massachusetts, but the development's going on. But the people have changed. They're real excited about the city. They're coming back to Boston, and that's a great sign. Most of every city's been moving out of Boston. We're all coming back. I chose to stay in Boston for a reason this offseason. That's because I'm, uh, I'm happy to be a Bostonian. You guys are the best. the first people to use the phrase Boston Strong. What does it mean to share this victory with this city? Well, I think we all know how strong this city is. And uh, for what we went through earlier this year in April with, uh, with the marathon bombings, for the city to come together and, uh, and, and for this team to bring a World Series back to this city, this has been nothing but a great experience. And, and I'm so lucky to be a part of it. Yeah! This, season, this season started. A lot of people thought, you know what, the Sox had a horrendous season last year and this year you come back and you guys were all gritty you win this can we make a prediction do you think next year perhaps you could have another one right next to this <laughs> you know what i'm gonna ask the crowd this do you think we're gonna win it again next year yeah. and the tree lighting this is a great celebration but we have another big celebration you may be winding up things in office but you're not sitting back you've got a lot of work that you've still been working on the first night we bring in the new year and this is going to be much different much bigger much better all because of you tell us about it yes thank you uh the first night had a very bad financial issue so i said to the right team let's take it over i went to wbz tv they said we'll step up too on, on the first night on the best first night the city of boston has ever had because of the cooperation we have with wbz tv the business community everyone working together come to our first night it's a great night Buttons are only $10 this year. They want the families to participate in the event. Let me ask you, what are your favorite holiday traditions, favorite holiday sites around Boston at the holidays? Well, I love the Boston Carnival for one thing. I love that. Um, in the neighborhoods, all the neighborhoods are lit up in the Christmas time. The trolley I too are doing for 17 neighborhoods of Boston. Well, that's a very special time. This is a very exciting time in our city. Because you're out there having a good time, shopping downtown, making sure that you know, we do our business downtown. But the lights, this year, the lights in Finger Hall and Black Lights, wow. You see something different you've never seen in the past. Are right, your favorite holiday treat, what is it? Well, an Italian hustle is Christmas Eve, let me tell you, pal. All right. Unbelievable this year. So to close out, we're going to follow in the tradition that Holly Hurley started six years ago, where we thank everyone at Basement that's helped us throughout the year. But first, I'd like to start by thanking Herb. It's been a wonderful year. Oh, thank you, Allison. It's been great working with you as well. And I'm looking forward to the upcoming year. As am I. And we'd especially like to thank our audience for tuning in this past year, and we're really looking forward to the upcoming year. We'd like to wish all of you and your families a very, very happy holiday and a happy and healthy new year. And may this be a peaceful year for all of us. Roll it, boys.